Okay, I think we are live on Facebook. Perfect. Well, good morning, everyone. I know you guys are still coming into the room. Welcome to Work It Wednesday. So this week, I am so thrilled to actually have Chasten J. Miles and Loida Velasquez with us. I'm going to let um, Chasten introduce himself, but I found Chasten when I joined EXP in 2018. I saw that he joined soon after, and it was him learning the company and all of that. And in the last six years, he's gone from what I would consider to be a normal agent to now he's an all-star. So I'm going to let him introduce himself, but I want to explain to you that besides being a real estate agent, he's also a coach, a TEDx speaker, a three-time author. Um, and so I'm going to give you the floor. Let me go ahead and make you a host right now so you can take control and share your screen if you would like. Thank you guys for joining us and let's go ahead and get started. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for that introduction. And Selena, it's, it's, is your name Selena? She just held up one of my books. I, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Yeah. This was a lifesaver <laughs> at the beginning. I, I love it. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, and and as you all heard, Jennifer definitely shared some some great things about me, and I appreciate it. But I do want to get you all to understand that that hasn't always been the story for me. Um, and and I actually like to say that I started off as a broke solo real estate agent. Um, back in twenty thirteen is when I got licensed, and it was shortly after. I moved from Georgia to Texas. I said, I'm going to move to Texas, work in real estate for a year. And then I had big dreams to move to California. Well, obviously that didn't happen because real estate, it took me just about a year to get my business going. As a matter of fact, I remember one morning I was walking out to go and host an open house at one of my listings and my electricity got disconnected. Because it was at that point where I couldn't continue to pay my electricity bill a week away from eviction. Nonetheless, I had to go and host that open house. This was a three hour open house. And the first hour went by, nobody came in. The second hour went by, still nobody came in. And by that third hour, I knew that no one was gonna be coming into this open house. I want you to imagine a large older home, vacant, very low lighting with the wood floors that you can hear every single step. It was winter time. And so it was, it was pretty cold in there as well. And I was just there alone. And I remember walking toward the front door and I turned that lock early and I immediately fell to my knees, bawling my eyes out. I was having a complete breakdown. I was thinking about how I moved across the country, how I was putting all of this stuff out there, making it look successful, making it look good, doing everything that I knew to build this business. And here I was with my electricity off at home, about to get put off, put out of my apartment. And I felt like a complete failure. And so I had a choice to make. I said, I can continue to go down this road, try to figure it out, or I can go and get a job and hopefully have some money in a couple of weeks. Well, from what Jennifer said a few minutes ago, obviously I decided to stay in the business and figure it out. But what I really had to figure out was what was my problem? What was I doing wrong? What did I need to change? I felt like I was working hard. I felt like I was doing everything people were telling me to do. I was watching the videos. I was going to the training classes, but here I was not making any money. And I came to the conclusion that nobody knew me. Like literally nobody knew me. I had no network. I had no following. I didn't have anything. Nobody knew me. And so it became my mission to put myself out there differently. I had to build my own network. I had to build my own clientele from the ground up. And that's the journey that I went on in my real estate business. So from there, I have, I've, I've written books. 
I just released my latest book just this last week called Do the Most. And that that book is really about how you can empower yourself to do more, right? One, one thing that a lot of people know me for is always doing something. Yeah, I sell over 100 homes a year, but I'm always doing something else, whether I'm flipping, writing books, traveling around, speaking, TV stuff. I'm, I'm always doing something. And a big question people ask me is, how do you do so much? And so I put it, I put it all in a book. You, you can get it on Amazon. It's called Do the Most, The Entrepreneur's Guide to Infinite Hustle. And I, 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 I'm really excited about this book because I really break down my systems and my processes for getting more done. It's not just about a calendar alert. It's about a mentality that I've, I've let come over me in my whole career as a real estate agent. Besides that, I've also traveled the country speaking at different events, helping other real estate agents build their brands, build their names, put themselves out there and generate leads through social media. I, I coach agents on a daily basis on how to do that. And so what I want to do today is actually share some of the social media strategies and some of the strategies that I've used in my business to really put myself out there and build that network around me. Is that all right with y'all? Yes. We good with that? Yes. And I just shared your links actually. And guys, I shared um, Chasten's um, Amazon links as well. So if you want to purchase that book, I think it would be a really great resource. So yeah, go ahead. We're excited. Awesome. So obviously everybody knows that video is, is, is the thing, you know, you have to produce videos. Um, no longer are the days where we just can put a blog post out there and hope that everybody notices it and generates a lead. Right. But I see a lot of agents trying to do videos, but not having much success. And by much success, I don't mean likes and comments and shares. I mean, actual leads coming in. And so what I want to do is kind of give you my video strategy that actually produces results. OK, with every video you put out there, whether it is long form or short form. Your video has to have something called a hook. A hook is something that happens in the first three seconds of your video. And it is meant to capture people's attention. Think about when you're on YouTube or TikTok or even Facebook looking at videos. As you start scrolling, if something doesn't catch your attention, what do you do? You scroll right past it. You, you, you just keep scrolling. Right. So that hook is very important. And the hook is not only what you're saying, but it's also what's on the screen. Most times, real estate agents, how do they begin their videos? Hi, my name is Chasen J. Miles, and I'm a real estate agent in Dallas, Texas. That's the wrong way to do it. OK, you're going to start with the hook. Now, what is a hook? Well, a hook can can be many things. But what I see work very successful is asking a common question that your viewer has, okay? Asking a common question that your viewer has. So for instance, a question could be, do you wanna know the cheapest way to buy a house? Do you wanna know the quickest way to fix your credit? Do you wanna know the best way to save for a down payment? Something that people are already asking you're just going to ask that question right back to them. Okay, from that hook or also when you have when you're saying that, that needs to be the text on your screen. So it, we all use captions, a lot of the apps will do the captions automatically. Sometimes people they don't have their audio on and they're just scrolling through to see what catches their attention and then they'll turn their audio on. So therefore you want to also have that question on the screen as text. All right, now we got them in for the hook. Now you're gonna tell people what they're going to hear from you. So for example, if my hook is, wanna know the best way to save money to buy a home? 
Well, I'm going to tell you the top three strategies that people are doing in 2024. Okay, you're going to tell them what they're going to get in that video. Okay, and this also needs to be attractive, right? Make it sound like it's something people haven't really heard before or it's a secret. I'm going to give you the secret strategy that people are using these days or I'm going to give you the 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 best way, you know, make it sound really good. From there, now you're going to make yourself credible, a.k.a. why should they listen to you? This now becomes the favorite realtor part. You should listen to me because my name is Chasing J. Miles, and I've been in the real estate business for over 10 years, and I've helped lots of people do this before. Okay, you're telling them why they should listen to your video. Now, you probably notice that I haven't even gotten to the meat of the video yet, and we're probably around 15 to 20 seconds in. Why is that? Well, that's due to something that happens behind the scenes, the algorithm. Have y'all heard of that word, algorithm? Right. It's it's how the platforms decide to push your videos out there. And that algorithm measures how long someone is watching your video. And so one of the, your goals should be to keep them watching. They want you to keep somebody watching for as long as possible. So if I can get 30 seconds into my video without even getting to the main meat of it yet, Right now, my watch time is going up, and that's very favorable to TikTok, to Instagram, to YouTube, to Facebook, all the platforms out there. Okay, so now we're going to get to the to the meat of it. I'm going to give them my first tip or my first strategy. I'm going to give them my second tip or strategy. And before I give my third tip, I'm going to insert a lead generating mechanism. Okay, Jason, what is a lead generating mechanism? I'm so glad you asked. A lead generating mechanism is something that is going to turn them into a lead. Now, here's what doesn't work. What doesn't work is go to my website and search for homes or call me. My phone number is na la 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 la. Okay, that doesn't work. People don't do that. What we have to promote and do is an exchange of value, an exchange of value. What that can be is a free download, okay, or a part two video, or a free one-on-one -on -one consultation, right? It's, it's something that that viewer is going to find valuable enough to give you their information by information name email address possibly phone number but it has to be super valuable so i'll give you an example for our video that we're giving the best ways to save money to buy a home ways i may say hey i have a list of 10 different ways and if you want that i have it just click the link in this video, okay? Now I'm telling them, hey, you're, you're getting just three of the ways right here, but if you want the other seven, I need your name and your email address. And now after I give that, after I deposit that little advertisement or that exchange of value, and now I'm gonna go to my point three, okay? The reason you do it that way is because when most people feel like a video is over or it's coming to an end, what do they do? They start swiping to the next one. So we're going to put that lead generating mechanism in there before they get to the end, all right? To have that exchange of value. Now, the best way to de deliver whatever this piece of value is that I found is something called Stand Store, um, S-T-A-N dot store. And you can actually go to standstore.com forward slash Chasen J Miles. You can get a discount. But Stand Store essentially takes away the need to create landing pages and funnels and all that kind of stuff. You can create a PDF in Canva, upload it into your Stand Store, and people 
directly from your link in bio. Stand store is pretty much like a replacement for link tree that allows people to download something right from that link. You don't have to go out there and build something. It's super quick and it converts very well. So I like using that because in my videos, I'll say, hey, just click the, the link in my profile and boom, they'll see it right there for them to enter their name and email right there on that link in my profile. And they're electronically delivered my piece of value. Okay, for 2024, the ads aren't working as well. Okay, the ads are not working as well as they have before. People are tired of just seeing advertisements. They want valuable information, right? They want something tangible that they can download, a step-by-step, -step, a cheat sheet, um, this and that. People aren't really ready to commit to a face-to-face, -face, right? We heard of nurturing, right, where we, where we can, you know, nurture them over a drip campaign. The way you do it nowadays is through the value that you give people. Jennifer, I see your, you put me, okay. <sighs> you know, it's the teacher in me. I got to raise my hand, but I have a quick question. So you were talking about putting the link in the video. Now, maybe I'm just new to YouTube because I've been doing it, but I thought like, don't you have to have a certain number of subscribers to actually put the link where it shows up on the video? Like if you don't have that many people, where should we put that link? Just in the description? Yeah. So you're all, so on YouTube, you're going to want to put the link in the description okay. on Instagram. Um, and on TikTok, this link is going to be in your profile. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to show you an example of my Instagram right quick. And so you can just kind of see how it breaks down when we put that link out there. Uh, all right. And I'm going to share my screen. I put it in mobile view just to give you all a realistic view of what the people will see. And speaking of 93% of people who are out there looking for this valuable information, they're on a mobile phone, okay? So make sure your websites, your profiles, everything is mobile optimized. The most important information goes up top, all right? People, they don't scroll like they used to. Um, so yeah, all right. So here's my Instagram. And as you can see, I have that link directly right there. So in my, my videos and even in my descriptions, I'll say something like link in profile or link in bio, click the link in my bio. And that tells people to go to my profile page and just click the link here. And then on my stand store, this is, like I said, like opens up pretty much like Linktree and they can see all of my links here. You can link to other websites. You can embed a form here. You can have a free download. But like I said, the most important things you want to put up top. Okay, so um, that's how you use your profiles as a way to lead generate. What I used to do in the past, I would have different links or different things in different videos. And that didn't work out so well um, just because there was always a different link for something. Now, I just put that one link on all of my profiles. I have it on my Facebook, my YouTube, my TikTok, Instagram, everywhere. And I can go behind the scenes and change things around, but I don't have to go to 50 different places and change the links on things. Okay. So that's why I like using one source for um, where I want to exchange value with people. That makes sense. Yep. So people have to input their information in order to um, get whatever you have on there? Yes. Like if they click on the link, okay. Yep, yep. So um, if it's if it's valuable, if, if what you're, you're giving is valuable, people will give you their information, right? So, so that's why I, I strongly encourage you to you know, just really think about what your audience wants or what do, do people want, not what's missing, okay? Because we have the the habit of, of saying, nobody's doing this, I want to do it. No, okay, you're doing it the hard way at that point. 
look and see what they're already searching for. You can do this through Google. You can do this through YouTube. A quick way to do this is just go to Google and start typing in something and see what auto populates, right? That shows you other things, other common things that people type in when they're searching around. Start typing it as a question. See what auto populates. That's giving you insights into what people are already searching for. And if they're already searching for it, once you create content about it, your videos will, will rank a lot easier than trying to draw everybody to something that they're not necessarily searching for. Okay. So I always tell people, sell people what they want, but give them what they need. So you can give them the secrets behind the scenes, but if they just want a credit hack, give them a credit hack on the, on the front end because that's what they're searching for. Does that make sense? Yes. Awesome. I, I'm going to show you just an example on the, um, on the stand store, how you can basically put that lead generating form in there. I'm just enabling it and I'll show you all what it, what it looks like. This is, I'm going to switch my screen here. Okay. So back into my Instagram. Okay. So I have my Instagram up. Let me make it mobile looking. Okay. So now I, if I click on my link here, so probate 101, download my ebook for free. They can put their name in their email right here, click the submit button, and it immediately gives them that download. Okay, so we're not sending them to another website. We're not creating friction, multiple steps. It's just right here. Okay, so this is an example of what you can put in your, your um, link tree or link in bio in order to get leads quicker. Because a lot of people, they're not going to call. Like I said, they're not going to scroll around on your, your website. They're going to search homes on Zillow and homes.com and all those other websites. So let's just give them the value that they really want, right? The information that Zillow is not giving them, right? So that's what I recommend for that. Um, and then from there, it's just about frequency, right? The way that the, the algorithms work these days, everybody who's following you is not going to see your posts. Everybody who's subscribed to you is not going to see your video. As a matter of fact, what the platforms are doing more of is showing your content to people who have never seen it to see if they can get them interested in you. So that's where frequency comes about. You got to release content frequently. Long gone are the days where it's one video a week or one post a week. You got to do it frequently. And you're not going to be annoying people. Because trust me, if someone doesn't interact with your content, then the platform stops showing it to them, right? It's like, why am I going to continue showing Chase and Jennifer's content if he's not interested in it? So you want to put out content frequently so that you can build that audience around you because it'll continue to find people who are actually interested in your content. These platforms want to make the creators just as addicted as the watchers. Okay. So it's super important. And yeah, I would just say for 2024, run with that. Whoever makes the most noise, those are the people who are going to be on top, right? The, the landscape is changing with AI out, out here with um, information, very accessible. We have to rely on our personalities at this point. We have to rely on our on our video presence. People have to see us and like us and want to work with us because just the information alone, it's it's totally accessible everywhere else. All right, Gia, you got a question? Yeah, two quick questions. First yeah. is I didn't realize that Stan Store could be the lead gen where you can put in, make them put in their name. So that's a good thing to know. Um, what's the pricing on that? Is that free? Is Stan Store free or is there a cost to it? 
there is a free trial. Um, let me see what the pricing is. That's I'm okay. Sure, I yeah, just want to know if it was a free much. version or if it was a um, mainly a cost version to it. Okay, yeah. I don't know the pricing, but I know they have a free trial. So you could definitely try it out. And so if I were to put, you know, your, you had that probate 101, they put in their name. So if I had a few lead magnets to go in that stand store, I mean, when I'm, you know, saying it on videos, should I say, you know, hey, click on, you know, link two or link three, like, or how, how, how do you communicate that in a video? If you have several lead magnets on your stand store? Yeah, I would, I would just simply say, click my my link in the bio because you never know you might change the order of them a year right. down the line right. um as long as you have a very captivating and attractive headline and it's clear like for instance for the probate 101 in my video i would say click on my my link and you can download the probate 101 guide right so when they go to that link i want that name to be very similar so that it takes any guesswork out of, is this the one? Is this the one? Is this the one? But they're going to look and find what they're looking for. Just just have it match up pretty similar. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Hey, Gia. Um, it's $30 a month for the stand store. Okay. Thank you. It, it goes up if you want to start charging people. So if you're doing a course... And you're gonna have them pay, then it, then that, then that price goes up. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. I know I am getting to the end of my time. Um, so, if if there are other questions or things that I can maybe answer, I can do I that. Have a question. So you said frequently. What does frequently um counts? Is it how many times per week, or are we talking per day? At, at least once a day. Thank you. Yep. All of your social media? No. So I <clears throat> recommend two solid platforms. Okay. And, and choose the platforms that you are most confident about. Choose TikTok. Do not choose TikTok. Okay. So choose the platforms that you are most comfortable using. And... Just run with those two. Once you've built up that authority on those platforms for certain videos, um, you have that clout going, then you can easily post on the other you know, platforms, TikTok, YouTube. You can post that same content. But for now, just start with two main platforms. So for newbies, which platform would you re um, recommend to start with? I'm not really good with any, to be frank <laughs> Okay. Um, well, okay. So you're not good with, with them or do you, do you, do you have accounts on any platforms? I do have account on Facebook, but I am not there frequently. So I haven't been there probably in the three, four months. I I'm new to whole real estate business and all these media. So I'm just trying to figure out how to be consistent, uh, which platform to run with. Okay. I would say Facebook and Instagram. Thank you. When you make your videos, do you edit them yourself or do you like pay for a service or? Good question. Yeah. So I typically edit them myself. I use an app called CapCut. Um, yeah. I, I use CapCut. I love or... CapCut. I love, I yeah. love that you said that. Yep. Um, if it's a longer video, I, I would use like Opus. OPUS um, and let it chop up the video automatically. Like if it's a long talk, what, what Opus is, it's an AI um, video editor that takes a long video and um, breaks it up into sh to shorts. Like it uses this AI to find the important parts and things like that. And it'll add captions. Um, but for the most part, I don't do really heavy editing when I'm when I'm using CapCut, so it, it doesn't take me long. I'm just doing a few slices here and there. These are great questions, y'all. 
yeah, it's, it's overwhelming and exciting, but you know, going back to your story, if you don't mind, I was just curious. So when all this happened and you decided that, you know, you didn't really have an audience from that point. And, and I asked this because honestly, I've been in the business six years, you know, um, my team is on here, a lot of them, but, um, you know, I've had success in it, but last year it was very difficult. And all of the real estate agents and their huge businesses and people I look up to, they all said the same thing. Last year really hurt. So for, it reminds me of that moment that you were having in that open house. So from that moment to when you discovered what you needed to change, how long did you see before you saw some real effects where you can, you know, you were consistently having a better reach and getting more leads? So from the social media, I would say it took about three to six months. Okay. Um, and, and the reason, you know, that it was that short and I say short because, well, the reason it was that long, because nowadays you can do it a lot quicker. Um, but the reason it was that long was because I was really trying to figure it out. Um, I didn't really know how the algorithms work. I didn't really know what I should be putting out there. Um, now it in short form didn't exist. So I was making long 12 minute videos. Um, but nowadays it can happen a lot quicker. Okay. The biggest thing is the consistency of it, especially if you decide to go down the YouTube route, because what YouTube doesn't like is people who start putting out videos and then they stop. Okay. They want like, they want to promote creators who are going to be consistent. So you can go viral overnight. Now I will say the, the pool of buyers or like the audience for real estate is not very large. Okay. So, so don't, don't um, equate your numbers to, you know, oh, I'm not getting Mr. Beast's numbers or I'm not getting these huge creator million people viewing. No, it's a lot different in the real estate niche. So um, I have agents in my coaching who literally get like three, five views on some of their, their videos. But then one of those views is somebody who reached out to them and they're a solid lead. That's yeah. a win, right? And so don't get caught up in the number of views and followers and subscribers. Get caught up in the, the consistent action of putting that valuable information out there. Thank you so much for coming on. I see that we have one more question question. And then um, Lloyd of Velasquez, I see that she just popped in the room. So we'll go over to her. But Chasten, seriously, you don't understand. Um, I've looked up to you for years. This was so beneficial. We really appreciate it. And again, if you see his content on Amazon, I put the link, look at one of those books. Um, I forgot who said that they have it in here, but um, I definitely can't wait to get my hands on it. And so Selena, I'll let you ask the question and then we'll go to Lloyd of Velasquez. Awesome. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, so my question is, after they fill out the form on the stand store, what's your what's your follow up? Do you wait for them to call you? Do you reach out to them? Is it kind of case by case? No, I actually have them on a on an email um, nurture campaign. So I'm consistently providing them value. So I do about three, three more value emails where I'm just giving them more and more information and clarity. Then I make a small call to action um, to where I want to get them to fill out something else, which is a survey, asking them, you know, a few questions about where they are in the, the process. Um, once they fill that survey out, then I'll start emailing them personally. If they don't fill it out, then it continues to provide them value, ask them again for that call to action. So I'm 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 doing the jab 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 right hook strategy with it. So value value value. Then make that that ask. Um, and then once they fill it out, they give me all their information. Now I take the conversation more personal. And like y'all, these these aren't like a hundred people a day. So it's not overwhelming. You don't need automations for everything. Um, especially once they, you know, give you a lot more information, you can take it over from from there. Oh, you're, you're muted. Oh, I said, thank you. <laughs> I said, thank you too. Thank you. 
This has been great. And um, we're going to give it over to Loida Velasquez. Um, I am so happy to have you on. I'm going to actually make you host. And so if you don't mind, Loida, I'd love for you to um, share a little bit about who you are. If you guys haven't seen her, you must be under a rock because I compare Loida. She's up there with like James Festini, who always shows the video on door knocking. Well, Loida, like really she from calling expires and cold calling she is a boss and she's done all of it the door knocking to everything she actually just switched from exp to real and so i'll let her introduce herself but i'm really happy to have you on yes jennifer thank you for having me hi everyone chasing good to see you we recently did an interview so i love to see chasing <laughs> we're always talking um he's awesome but um yeah just to give you a little background about myself I've been in the business since 2015. When I started, I went after expires and for sale by owners, making phone calls. I knew that I wanted to go after sellers and work listings. Um, I just, you know, I figured if I'm going to invest my time, I might as well go after a type of lead that, you know, is going to uh, give me a guaranteed paycheck pretty much. Now, I hated cold calling. In fact, before I even started real estate, and I knew of real estate agents that had to make calls or hit the doors or prospect, I thought, you know what? I'm never going to do that. That is embarrassing. Yet that's exactly how I grew my business. Now, what gave me the confidence was knowing that, you know, a lot of agents don't like to do that type of prospecting. So I told myself, I'm going to get so good at this. I'm going to role play and practice objection handlers so much that when I do get on the phones, uh, people are going to see that I'm different from the other agents that are calling them. And my goal will be to set an appointment every single day. Um, I was horrible in the beginning. You guys can probably go to my YouTube channel and see my very first live for sale by owner phone call that I did. It's crazy that I recorded it and posted it on YouTube because now, you know, I see it. I'm like, man, that was really bad. But you can kind of see the transformation from back then to where I am now, where I'm not afraid of picking up a phone call or if I'm driving down the street, if I see a for sale by owner sign, I kind of want to pull over and call just to test my skills. But, you know, at the end of the day, when it comes to prospecting and generating leads, I know that we want to be efficient and effective with our time. So that's why, again, I, I've said I've always gone after expireds for sale by owners. Not a lot of agents are calling them. A lot of agents give up. Um, you do hear a lot of objections, but again, it just comes down to role playing, practicing and, and knowing what to say and working on your skills. You're being way too humble. So nothing that Loida has done is bad. In fact, she has over 90,000 subscribers and over 5 million views. So um, she has really showcased her success, but um, so besides that, you also do coaching, correct? Um, is there a way that um, people can see the role playing? Because I know you just left a role playing call. So yeah. how does that work? And if you could share some of those success strategies, that would be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So if you guys, you can send me a DM on Instagram at Lloyd Avelas um, or on Facebook. Um, I run a role play session that I do every single Wednesday with a Mike Ferry coach. And we open this up to everybody at 1030 in the morning, uh, Eastern 730 uh, Pacific. And, you know, for me, what made a big difference was actually working on my skills. Um, I remember when I first started making calls, I thought that role playing and practicing my scripts was corny because I said, you know, I know what to say. I have it here. Like, why do I have to practice with somebody? But once I started to do it, I started getting role play partners every single day of the week. And they were from different parts of the United States. So everyone had their own different personality, the way that they spoke. And that's really what helped me get very good. So I would practice before I would make my calls. So that's why we do these sessions early in the morning for the uh, West Coast. And what I saw was that, you know, when I practice before I start making my calls, when I do make my calls, sometimes I hear the exact same thing that I role play. So now when I speak, I'm just so much more confident with what I'm going to respond. And that allows me to be able to go and set the appointment. So yeah, you can reach out to me there, send me a message. I can send you the link uh, for these Zoom role play sessions. But in terms of just like success tips for, you know, this year, because we're still, we're wrapping up January. 
I know that many of you probably have set your goals for what you want to accomplish this year. Maybe last year wasn't the best, or maybe this year you're trying to step it up and take it to the next level. Um, if there's really a few things that I want to focus on, you know, it's nothing crazy. The first thing you have to be very disciplined with your schedule and what you do every single day, every hour. If you have not written down, you know, or time blocked when you're generating leads or prospecting or following up, that's really the first thing that you have to do because it's happened to me many times where we get busy doing something that's not even an income producing activity. You have to focus on that. If you're scrolling on Facebook or creating a flyer on Canva, that's not income producing activity. You could do that, but you can do it maybe later in the afternoon. For me, I've always focused on generating leads in the morning. Um, I've always stuck to that schedule, starting at eight o'clock with expires and going to 11, 30, 12. If you don't have anything going on in the afternoon, doing the same thing, whether it's going to preview a property so that you get familiar with your market, um, doing follow-up or calling your sphere of influence. I mean, there's always someone that you can reach out to. And it's a numbers game. The more people you talk to, eventually you're going to reach out and find someone that's looking to either buy, sell, or invest, or they can refer you business. If you're not putting yourself out there, then no one even knows you're probably in the business. Um, when it comes to video, I think probably Chasen talked about video. Just like Jennifer said, you know, my YouTube channel has over 90,000 subscribers. Now, when I started my YouTube channel, I was posting a video every single week. And what's crazy is that back then, it's not like I had this crazy strategy or uh, all this equipment and lighting. No, for me, it was just picking up my cell phone. And I said, you know what, I'm going to film myself what I'm learning. And hopefully it helps at least one agent. And if it does, great, because they might be able to get a paycheck now. And I was just being consistent. So figure out where in your schedule you want to plug that in. I would recommend focusing on that in the afternoon. But again, set a goal for yourself. If you have a coach or if you have your broker that helps you or a team leader, get together with them and create a game plan if you haven't done so already, because this will allow you to stay on track so that you can reach those goals and those numbers. Um, at the same time, another thing is just try to stay focused on one thing. Sometimes we want to do a million different things. We want to call, we want to knock, we want to do TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, we want to start a YouTube channel. Whatever you're already good at or that you want to focus on, just pick that. Maybe it's one or two things. I'd rather you just be very good and incorporate your skill building every single day. Because again, if we're you can post as many things out there, but if it's not generating leads, then you're just kind of wasting time. Um, so working on your skills, having that schedule, um, focusing on little goals first. You know, I don't want you to think, okay, well, I want to sell 50 homes this year, but last year you only sold two homes. 50 might be like, how am I going to get there? Well, let's break it down. What are the activities that you are currently doing and how are we going to get to those 50? Um, how many people does it take for you to set an appointment or get a lead? If you're working with a buyer, do you have your team set up? Do you have people that are helping you as well? Because I don't know about you, but buyers have taken a lot of time from me when I have worked with them. And sometimes it's been months and I'm like, nothing's happened. That's why, again, I like to focus on listings because I can control my time a little bit more. Um, I'm not sure if maybe some of you are doing this part time or maybe you have kids. So you have other things outside of real estate that you have to incorporate in your schedule. You have to figure that out. Um, something that a lot of agents, a lot of moms tell me is that they have conversations with their kids. Some of them are as little as like two, three years old. And it's almost like they have a family hut on. They're like, hey, especially if they work from home and they tell their kids, you know, between this time and this time, mommy's going to be making calls. So if you need something, you got to be, you know, use your low voice and things like that. And it works for them. So it's setting also those standards so that your family knows exactly what you're trying to accomplish um, and is supportive of the goals that you want to reach. Because I think that sometimes what ends up happening is that we know we can control our schedule, but if there's something outside that comes in, whether it's someone that tells you, hey, you want to go here or can you do me this favor? 
it's almost like we drop what we're doing because, oh, well, you know, I got to do this. Again, it comes back to being disciplined and knowing that, you know, Jennifer, I love to go with you, but between eight and 12, I'm busy generating um, more clients for my listings or looking for homes from, for my buyers. But anytime after two o'clock, I'm totally open for whatever you want to do. That is so awesome. I have so many questions already, but you know, I get stuck in that loop too, when I'll have someone call me and it's 10 o'clock at night. It's like, I want to take the phone call, but then you set that precedence. And the only time mm -hmm. they call you is 10 o'clock at night. Um, I, I guess a few questions, if you could just give us, see, I don't time block. I do activity blocking. It's easier for me because, um, and I've shared this before. It's the same concept. I know that every day I'm spending four hours prospecting. I'm doing um, an hour of education. I'm doing this. So if I can't do it at this time, I can move that chunk of time over, but I still have to get those hours in. So <laughs> For your schedule, what would you say hour wise you spend on a day doing different real estate activities, prospecting, lead generating education? Yeah, um, well, I'm glad that you brought up kind of what you do, because whatever works for you, do that, because what might work for you, maybe not work for me or maybe, you know, so what I like to do is focus from, like I said, eight o'clock to about 11, 30, 12 just hitting the phones of prospecting. In the afternoon, I set it aside for follow-up. Um, once I have followed up, that's also the time. So between, I wanna say between like one and three. So after lunch, I would do follow-up. I would do anything that's admin related. Um, if you have to send out an email or CMA or what I like to also do during this time is that if I had gotten a lead in the morning, and I have their cell phone, I'll do a video message. I love to send a video text message to people because this will make you stand out, especially if you're calling and they've gotten a lot of phone calls from agents or even the follow-up to the people that you already know. This will make you stand out and be like, oh, this is awesome. Jackie sent me a video. I'm doing great. Thank you for checking in uh, versus just like a, a text. And then after that three o'clock time frame, if there's nothing else going on, then it would be... Um, you can preview property or get back to making phone calls or uh, training. So whatever it is to help you grow your business. And if not just, you know, getting back to prospecting. Um, I like to say, if you don't have any deals going on, I mean, you have time to, to talk to people, go out, network. I mean, just start conversations. That's awesome. And um, I guess the other two questions I had was number one for YouTube. For us newbies, like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to grow my subscribers. I'm publishing content. Do you think it's a good idea to run any paid ads on those videos? And the second question is just a general overview of your expired script, if you'll share. Um, in terms of paid ads, I personally have never done that myself. Uh, so I wouldn't be able to give you any feedback on that. Everything that I have done on my YouTube channel has always been organic. If anything, what I would recommend is that as you're creating, yeah, I've never paid for subscribers or anything like that. Um, when it comes to YouTube, as you are thinking of content, just think of what is a question that people need an answer to or what are they searching? So you want to focus on the way that you title a video and also a thumbnail. Because um, obviously, based on the title and the thumbnail, someone's going to be like, oh, I want to check this out. So the more people that click on it, the more that YouTube sees that, hey, people are interested in this. And it might start suggesting some of your other content. So, yeah, it's it comes down to, you know, especially if you're starting out on YouTube, um, you might have to test out different type of videos. Maybe some are educational, some are you a day in the life or whatever. And you'll see from there what it is that people like to see. But again, I would say focus on, on having a good title and a thumbnail, especially for YouTube. Great. What other questions do you guys have? Uh, I have a question. What is your typical script for FISBOS. So English is my second language. And what I find myself that uh, probably due to cultural differences, um, I think maybe I come across a little bit too pushy. So what would be your advice on that? 
for for sale by owner. Okay, and then I just remember, Jennifer, you asked me also about an expired script, right? Okay, so you know what I can actually do is um, whether it's Jennifer or you, I'm not sure if your name is. Yeah, I'm sorry, Lena. About my name is Lena. Yeah. Okay, um, if you want, we can even do a very quick role play so you can see what that sounds like. That would so be you could be the for sale by owner and I'll be the agent. Okay, so. Okay, that's great, thank you. <laughs> All right, ring, ring. Hello? Hello, is this the right number for the house that's for sale on Main Street? Um, yeah, it is. Who is calling, please? Yes, this is Loida. Look, very quick, I'm a, a real estate agent in the area. I work with a lot of buyers and sellers in your neighborhood. So I just wanted to reach out and see what I can do to help you. Oh, I'm not interested in working with agents. I am i don't look for pay any commissions to you. I'll try to do it on my own. Thank you. Oh, okay. So if I did have a qualified buyer that's interested in purchasing your house, what would you want me to do? Uh, you, you can bring if you have one, but I'm not sure that I'm going to pay a commission to you. Okay, so you're at least open to possibly having a conversation if I have someone interested. Um, yes, as I said, it's for sale. That's why I list it on my own, so I want to save on commission. If you have a Got buyer, it. Need one. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Now, I found it on Zillow. Um, I only see like two or three pictures. Can you tell me a little bit more about the house? Is it vacant? Do you still live there? Yeah, the house is vacant. It needs some TLC, but I want to sell it. I really want to sell it, but I don't want to sell it for peanuts. So I'll, I'll just see what deal can I get. Of course. Yeah, I'm sure that you don't want to give it away, right? You want to get the most money? Yes, of course, like everybody else. Yeah. So I know that you just mentioned the house is vacant. It just needs some TLC. Uh, so were there tenants living there or are you going to be doing a 1031 exchange once you sell this? No, um, I don't have any tenant. Um, I'm not going to uh, do any uh, ex um, exchanges. I just want it to be sold and I'll get as much as I can. Oh, okay. So you're pretty much just looking to cash out, it sounds like, right? Yes. And get yeah. the most money for the for the place exactly. yeah got it so it, is the commission really the only reason why you decided to not work with an agent and try this yourself yes um e exactly it's very important for me to sell for most amount of money but i, I don't want to put any money into realtor's pocket <laughs> of course have you had a bad experience in the past or do you just hate realtors um I just know you guys just putting a stick on my yard and put on MLS and before you know, you're going to cash up on my sale for doing nothing. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, unfortunately there are some agents and that's all that they do. Um, but at this point, have you just been getting calls from agents or, or buyers as well? Uh, I get a lot of calls from agents. I see that on Zillow, there are thousands of years, so, but everybody's trying to lowball me. Yeah, well, you didn't know that that was going to happen, right? Um, yes, but it's the same thing with the agent. So if I'm trying to sell for 220, that's what I'm hoping to get. But if I work with the agent, I'll have to pay 6% that I'm not lo looking to do so. Of course. Now you said uh, the price two twenty. Are you negotiable? Or are you firm on that? Uh, yeah, I am open to um, any uh, options. J just bring okay. the offer. Yes. Now I see that on Zillow, it's been um, you've been trying to sell it for about thirty days. Is that right? Uh, it uh, actually has been longer, uh, sixty-seven days. Wow, sixty-seven days. And how many offers have you gotten in that time frame? Well, obviously, since I'm still in the market, I haven't gotten any. Wow, that is crazy. You know what? With my clients that have hired me to, to sell their home, typically our property is under contract in less than two weeks. So it's very surprising that it's been 67 days and you haven't gotten any offers. Um, now I'm just curious, how much longer do you think you'll take before you might consider a different approach so you can actually cash out for the most and get this property sold. 
Well, to be honest, I don't know. As I said, I am open to a reasonable offer, but um, whatever it takes, I'll be um, on the market. But um, I appreciate your call, but you're kind of wasting my time. I know that you want my listing. Uh, I don't know why people wouldn't leave me alone if I'm selling on my own. Just let me be. I would love to sell on my own. If I need a realtor, I know where to look for you. Yeah, you know, I get it. And at any point, I don't think I have mentioned that I'm actually looking for a listing. Um, but I have worked with a lot of clients in your neighborhood. And it just sounds like you're very frustrated right now because it sounds like you're just getting a lot of calls from agents, right? That are wasting your time. Yeah. And that's not what you want. Calling, somebody came under a pretense um asking they want to see but then they started asking for a listing so if you want yeah. to see if you have a real client please come and take a look if not i don't have time for any uh, conversations yes and do you know why you're getting just agents calling you well everybody wants a listing as i said you guys making a lot of money just by putting a stick on a yard not just that, but everybody, whether it's an agent and especially investors, know that you're not being represented. So, of course, their job is to negotiate the lowest price and the best terms for them. And you did say that you want the most money for your home right now, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So what if actually partnering up with an agent can get you more money in your pocket than doing it yourself? Isn't that something you would want to know? Well, but is there a guarantee that I actually going to sell for most of the money because you all come with the same script, but at the end, two weeks later, you will be asking for a price reduction. Then before you know, I have to pay 6% and at the end, I leave with nothing. Yeah. And you know, Lena, it sounds like maybe you had that experience in the past. But the same way that you are picky about agents, I'm also picky with the clients that I choose to work with. And look, at the end of the day, we might not even be a good fit for each other. But just from our conversation the past couple minutes, you sound very frustrated and you're just going to keep on getting phone calls from agents. And you did say that that's not what you want, right? 67 yeah. days without any offers. What if your home could actually be sold by this weekend? I'm sure that that's something you would be excited about, right? I will be excited, but for me, the most important to sell for the most of the money. Uh, if Perfect. I put a dollar sign on my house, I know that I'll sell it in the next 10 minutes, but I want to yeah. sell. So you know what? Let's, let's do this because it sounds like you're at least open to a conversation to see if it makes sense. So look, I am available during the evenings or the weekend. When would be a good time for us to get together? Um, you know what? Uh, let me take a look and think about and I'll give you a call. How does that sound? Yeah, you can totally do that. However, my calendar is getting booked up and you did say that the sooner that you can get this property sold, the better, right? So look, today is Wednesday. I'm available this evening at five o'clock or if you like, we can meet up tomorrow. Tomorrow, When would be better for you? Um, okay, we can meet up tomorrow. Okay, perfect. Tomorrow, two o'clock or five o'clock, when would be better? Uh, five o'clock probably will be uh, better. Okay, perfect. All right. So look, we'll get together tomorrow, five o'clock. I'm not telling you to sign anything or commit to anything because like I said earlier, I'm not even sure if we're a right fit, but at least we can go over a different approach that could possibly get your property sold because 67 days, your, your property should have been sold, you know, 60, 60 days ago. So Lena, what is a good email for you? That way I can also shoot um, some information about myself and my team that we'll be going over tomorrow. Well, you, you do have my phone number because I listed on, on Zillow. So this is my phone number. I can be reached there. Yes. How about an email? Do you have a good email? Um, you know what? You can text me. Okay, perfect. All right. So I'll text you tomorrow. Um, we'll get together at five o'clock, but I'll also reach out to you earlier in the afternoon, just in case for some reason your schedule changes. All right. So I look um, forward to meeting tomorrow. We'll just take it from there. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you. Tomorrow. All right. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Sorry. I was giving you a hard time. Oh my gosh. Oh no, it's okay. Oh. I would have kept going. <laughs> because that's what I get the pushback. So I spoke with a lady yesterday and she said it needs a lot of work and our office offers 
offers a service that you don't pay anything up front. They'll come, they do all the work and you pay at the closing. So, and she was rushing to her meeting. She said, okay, I'll call you back. And then I told her I've been giving her all the options and she yelled at me that I am trying to just push my way through all these options just to get to sign her contract. Although I didn't mention anything. I just told her, look, by working with a client, with a realtor, you actually have a better representation. You get most money for your house. But I just been yelled at and she hung up on me. You're going to get people like that too. Um, what I like to say also is you don't want to give too much over the phone. So like if you start kind of getting into the mode that the mode that you're explaining yourself, now you're kind of losing them because now they're like, okay, she might be desperate for this listing. So if you heard many times I said, you know what, I'm not even sure if we're a good fit for each other, but you sound frustrated. So it comes down to listening to what they're saying and then seeing how you can use it against them. So she said, 67 days on the market. Wow. I mean, you guys even saw my expression. I made sure tonality, 67 days. That's crazy. Because then now that might put doubt in their head. Like, is this really bad? Like, why does she react like that? And that's kind of like what I want them to feel. And yeah, it's kind of a takeaway approach. Look, we have nothing to lose. At the end of the day, you do want a different approach if it means getting your property sold for more money, right? Cool. So let's get together. 10, 15 minutes, that's all it takes. If it doesn't make sense, we'll shake hands and, and that's it. But if not, what's the worst that can happen? You can get, you can be sold by this weekend or you can be sold in the next 30 days and not have to worry about annoying realtors calling you. So yeah. And Lita, um, again, that was hysterical. That's exactly the phone call. I mean, it was so funny. And there's a few things that I noticed. Loida, number one, you validated everything she said. So she would say something and then I would hear you repeat it and just rephrase it, um, which I really liked. But um, I, I guess my question is for someone like this, let's say they list their house for 350000 because what I find is a lot of times they're overpriced, which is very common. So in your head, if you run the numbers before you have this appointment and you realize she's probably overpriced 15,000, is it still worth it to go knowing that she's really going to want it for more money because she's now paying a commission? Okay. So then what I would do when I wrapped up, well, after I set the appointment, so, okay, we'll get together tomorrow at five o'clock. Immediately, I will go into pre-qualifying them. So I ask all of the seller pre-qualification questions like, okay, you know, what's the lowest you might consider? Can you tell me more about the house? Three bed, two bath, blah, blah, blah. And if they say, well, why are you asking all these questions? Then I would say, well, look, I'm going to do my homework so that when we get together, you know, I can come prepared so we're not wasting time because you don't want your time wasted, right? Okay, cool. So I'm going to do my homework. And then from there, if she says, you know, I want 350, um, once I do my homework and I'm running comps and I see that they, they're way overpriced, then I'll call back. Hey, Lena, you know what? I was doing my homework really quick. How did you determine that 350 that you wanted? Or even as I'm qualifying them and she says, yeah, you know, I want 350. Okay, great. How did you come up with that number? Because I want to find out what the logic is because maybe she might say, oh yeah, you know, my neighbor sold for 350. Okay, got it. So I'll write that down. So when I'm doing my homework, and I see that she's overpriced, I'll reach back out and I say, you know what? I know you mentioned you wanted 350 because your neighbor sold. Did you know they were actually a thousand square feet bigger than your home? Because maybe they're just not, they're misinformed or not educated or they have no idea how pricing works in real estate. And then from there, I'll go back to the motivation and I'll say, look, when we get together, are you ready to price the home at market value? Um, based on what the market is saying, or are you adamant about the, the 350? And if she's like, oh, well, 350, if I don't get 350, like, don't even waste my time. And then I'll go back to what the motivation is. Okay, so you want to have a vacant house? You, you said earlier that you wanted to cash out, right? Are you going to be, you know, taking a vacation, going on a cruise? Like, I try to continue the conversation to really dig deep as to why they want to sell. And if the motivation is not there, then I will cancel and reschedule. And I'll say, you know what, if you really want 350, um, I don't want to waste your time and go on the market. You said agents come and ask you for price reductions. That's not what I do. 
quite the opposite. I would rather us get into a situation where we get you more money, but 350 at this point, you're better off just keeping the house. And I'm okay with canceling appointments and turning it away because I don't want to take an overpriced listing. Absolutely. Well, again, you don't understand how appreciative I am. I've been one of your biggest fans on YouTube, which I mean, with 90,000, you probably didn't know me, but maybe <laughs> you did. Um, but for everyone that's on this call, I just in the chat put Lloyd's links because um, there is so much value offered, but at the very least, you all need to subscribe to her on YouTube. When you do your education component of your real estate, which everyone should do every week, and that's what you're doing right now, I would take some time and add her um, on your YouTube. But there's different, you know, things that that Lloyd offers. But honestly, um, she is one to watch. Um, I am really appreciative. I mean, I feel like I wish that uh, I could get your autograph, honestly, like seriously. <laughs> no, I've been watching you for years. You're incredible. But this was so much value. And I know that the group appreciates it. It's going to be live in Facebook. The recording is going to go on YouTube for those that could join us right now. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yes. with, before we let Lloyd go I am also her big fan. I've been watching her when she was, I think, with Mal Uh My question to um, Lloyd would be, sometimes when I try to pre-qualify to say, what will the minimum, will you take it? And I get the response, why would I tell you? Why would I put myself in the corner? So how would you respond to that? Um, <clears throat> I think there's different ways that you can respond to that. So if they did say, well, why do you want to know? Um, I would say, well, you know, you said you wanted 350. How did you come up with that number? So maybe like rewording it to figure out how they came up with that number instead of the lowest, because what I really just want to know is the motivation and if they're realistic on the price. If they're like, you know what, I'm not going to give you that number because I don't want to give that away, then it's not that big of a deal. Once you do your homework, if you see that the numbers are off, then that's when you do a follow up call just to get more information. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for joining Work It Wednesday. Um, if you need anything else, reach out. Again, this information is going to be sent to you with the guide and all of their links and the replay of the video. But um, this was awesome. Thank you guys. And you hope you guys have a wonderful, productive day. All right. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye.